Yo, what is up everybody? I am Mami Yoshiko. Welcome to my channel if you're new here or welcome back to my channel, Mother Freaker. And we are here again with another very late, might I add, fruits basket comparison video. And as I stated before, freaking these take so long for me to do because I am like so tedious about this that I literally want the head turns and the blinks to be at the same time. And I'm in university and I'm too stubborn to hire an editor, blah, 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 you fucking get it. Cause right now I am trying to catch up so you will see another comparison of the next three episodes really soon because the first season is almost over. But for now, let's talk about episode 12 to 14 of Fruits Basket. Okay, Lego. Let's start off with episode 12, the first day of the spring term where Toru, Yuki, and Kyo are now second years at their school. And this is the episode where Momiji and Hatsuharu transfer to their school. And as Toru is talking to Uo, you see a mysterious car that we might have seen in like a previous episode. Ominous, ominous, ominous. And now the hunt to find Hatsuharu and Momiji begin. As Toru took freaking Kyo, who has a hard time saying no to Toru, but I live for this ship, I will die for this ship. These two low lives try to freaking make a pass at Toru. Um, excuse me, yo, I would have loved to like pimp slap those kids right there. How dare you call Toru an airhead? I mean, she, I mean, she kind of acts like an airhead, but she's a cute airhead. Freaking, do you hear me? And then Kyo came to the rescue claiming his freaking territory. And then here comes adorable Momiji. He's so cute. I love him. Zaddy, best boy, Hatsuharu. Yes, I'm so ready. Also, for those who have seen my hair, um, wink, wink, wink. I just adore the relationship between Hatsuharu and Yuki so freaking much. Yes, Momiji, you gotta play it cool at school. And ah, shit, student council president Makoto Takae, whatever his name is. Oh yeah, the freaking original guy came back or whatever. Cool, coolio. Leave my boy alone with his piercings. And now Mr. Student Council President is pressing Hatsuharu for his gaudy jewelry and his hair color. Mr. Class President, please leave Momiji alone if he wants to wear the girl's uniform. Let him live. And now Black Haru appears. I love his speech like, yo, just cause I have two colors does not mean I can't kick your ass. I love Hatsaru so much. And we love a screaming irrational Black Haru. Yo, I'm not ready to see freaking older Momiji. That freaking one clip and then no spoilers, but like, yo, I'm not ready for older Momiji. Um, hold me back, please. I swear though, I was like, yo, the freaking president like has some crush on Yuki. And Mr. President is like, boy, that's not your real hair color unless you can prove it to me, wink wink. Boy, he proved it. Hatsuharu <laughs> proved it. I was dying so hard at this scene. This is probably one of my favorite scenes from the OG anime. It's so freaking funny. And yo, I am living for the freaking screech of that president and just made it so hilarious. I don't know why, I just thought it was so cute. Haru proved his point, I guess. And I'm assuming he gave him all the proof he needed. Haru wiped that fucking smirk off your face. And innocent, innocent baby Toru. She wants to know, so how did you convince the president that that was your natural hair color? And boy, Black Haru, you are way too much. Way too much for innocent baby Toru. Um, and for those who don't know, cause when I first saw this episode when I was younger, I honestly did not get it. So I didn't understand jack shit, but now I do. There's a lot of things in this anime I never understood from the OG until I see it again now. Literally like 17 years later, but um, <clears throat> Do the carpets match the drapes? <laughs> and then Momiji asks to speak to Yuki and Kyo in private to warn them that Akito is actually at the school. And remember that car in the beginning of the episode? That was Akito! And Momiji was like, sorry boo, you can't, this is an A-B conversation, so see yourself out. So Toru went walking through the halls and she actually runs into Akito. And oh my God, my baby Yuki was not okay. Like, ugh, this, it hurts so much seeing just how unsettling it made Yuki, just knowing Akito was at the school. And luckily, Akito was pretty tamed, pretty harmless to Toru. 
even calling her cute and shiz, but Yuki saw this and was like, ah, oh, nah, y'all better get away from Toru. And this, oh, this scene breaks my heart. For those who don't know, like, my comparisons, I actually post on my Instagram. So I actually posted this one scene, and this scene was so freaking dark. But that fear in Yuki's eyes, that room where younger Yuki literally looks like he's going insane. And it is clear to see that Akito tortured poor Yuki. Tortured Yuki when he used to live at the Soma house. And brave Ballsy Toru pushed Akito on her own instinct, seeing Yuki in fear. I was like, yes, baby, but then baby, I don't want Akito to hurt you. And freaking Kyo. If looks could kill, not even kill, serial murder. That look in Kyo's eyes is just pure hatred and venom. And my baby Toru takes Yuki to play some badminton with the others, freaking making him feel better. And then we cut to Akito and Shiguri in the car. First of all, Akito, how dare you call Toru ugly? And Shigure says how Akito actually kept Yuki locked in a room. And then you see a flashback that was not in the original anime, but was in the manga, where Yuki is literally on his knees just begging Shigure, get me out of here, get me out of this house. And I was, oh, ugh, it's so bad. And I loved this one quote that Hattori said. I know it was like kind of differently phrased in the, in the original, but it was something along the lines of, just because those can afflict pain, there is also someone who can heal pain. Beautiful, beautiful quote from our beautiful husband, Hattori. And episode 13, let's go. My favorite bloody episode. We start this new episode by seeing Yuki and Toru in the garden. And can we just talk about how precious and so cute Yuki is in the reboot? Like that freaking tummy growl, baby, I will feed you whatever you want. And while Toru is walking, freaking remembering the craziness from the last week's episode, she sees a pile of clothes on the floor and then she feels something <laughs> slithering up her clothes and it was a cute adorable i don't know if he is supposed to be a python and shiguri recognizes this snake to be ayame soma one of the other zodiac people and then boom you know what i don't give a fuck i'm adding saxophone music my thirst could not handle this like that freaking that long hair dude i oh my god i love that black shirt introducing the beautiful ayame soma who is also yuki soma's older brother but yo i freaking love Love that little bromance Ayame and Shigure have. It's so funny and it's just so freaking silly. And then freaking abomination Ayame freaking drags freaking Toru. Scurries out of the house and takes her out to lunch. They're at the restaurant and then Toru's like, I didn't even know Yuki had a brother. And Ayame was like, well, we are 10 years apart, but Yuki was always sick as a child. So I did whatever the freak I wanted. We eventually grew apart and I was very reluctant to the fact that I even had a brother, which is very sad in my opinion. And then Ayame reveals to Toru that he heard Akito visited the school and that Akito was a great source of fear for Yuki. And that's why he came to visit, that he wanted to come to the house and he wanted to just make sure his little brother was all right. And that's like one of the reasons I love Fruits Basket so much, cause the freaking the feelings and the problems and insecurities that these characters have are like so relatable, like sibling shit. And also when he was talking about how you kind of realize a lot of shit when you're older and how we are very oblivious to things when we are children. But then when we are older, we realize that there are things we could have said and could have done and just how different our lives could have been. But I feel this on like a personal level because like I'm going through a freaking quarter life crisis right now. I feel this in my bones. And then Toru recollects her beautiful mother. I love the saying that Kyo Kyoko always has the best quotes saying how like she tries to like keep the youth in her so she can understand people who are younger than her because when you're an adult, yeah, you, you kind of have a different mentality. But when you keep that little bit of youth in your head, you're able to communicate and understand like how like a teenager would feel and so you can meet them halfway we come back to the house toru asks yuki do you really hate your brother and he's like it's not that i hate him he's just a lot <laughs> which he is and then bam ayami pops out of toru's shirt and yuki just wants to kill him i swear this freaking reboot yuki's favorite word is scum I swear to God. And this scene is so freaking hilarious. Ayame freaking sleeping with Kyo. 
Ayomi's like, Yuki's room was locked. I couldn't sleep in there. And Kyo's like, well, why didn't you sleep with Shigure? And he's just like, I'd be up all night if I slept with that boy. And I'm just, in my head, I'm just like, yo. And then Ayami tells us the story on how he kept his long hair at school. And dude, Ayami is just chaotic and and extra as fuck, but I love it so much. Ayami actually was student council president. So apparently a bunch of kids took a trip to the pleasure district. And another thing I didn't really understand from the first time I saw this episode was I didn't get what the, because in the original they called it the red light district. But it wasn't until I saw the reboot and I was like, Ah, I get it. Wait, where did they go? Ayame for president. Can Ayame be our president, please? For all my USA people. And you a bottom boy? Ayame is a freaking bottom boy? Well, now I know what you were doing with Shigai. At least Hattori was there to save the day. And then Ayame's like, you like me now, brother? And Yuki's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> I also noticed in the OG that Toru calls it like the gap between the brothers, but in the English of the manga it is called the rift. So they corrected it in the reboot calling it the rift, so um, woo! And then Hattori's like, bitch, we going home now. Apparently, Hattori is the only one that Ayame listens to, and that's because he looks up to him and respects him. And Ayame says Toru actually reminds him of Hattori. And that smile, I would die for that freaking smile! And Hatsuharu, I love how much he freaking cares about Yuki. It's just so freaking cute and heartwarming. <laughs> Episode 14, let's go. You wanna cry? You came to the right place. So today is the one year anniversary of Toru's mother, Kyoko's death. And Yuki, being the kind gentleman he is, offers to go with her. And you see that there's a certain look on Kyo's face. Also, we got a cute new opening. It's really cute and adorable. I freaking love the umbrellas. I love that each of the characters have their own personalized umbrella. So now I'm gonna go buy an umbrella cause I wanna be Hatsaharu. And now we're here with Uro, Hana, and Toru and they reminisce in the memory of Kyoko. And damn, Kyoko was a badass. I freaking adored that crimson butterfly. I want that jacket. Then Momiji is being chased by a bunch of boys. And then Toru is like, I never really noticed the Zodiac members talk about their parents. Despite like one brief mention from Yuki. Are you ready for the field strain? Cause it's coming. We skip to the scene where Toru's at work and Momiji's there helping her being the adorable gentleman he is. And Toru asks about what family member was from Germany. And Momiji's like, oh, it was my mom. I don't even remember the freaking German turn. Momji, I don't remember. And that he also had a little sister named Momo. And for those complaining about why Momiji has an accent and that he, he didn't live and grow up in Germany for you, why does he have an accent? I hope you freaking hush up after this. I hope you get it, JK, but like for real. But there was a lot of complaining and freaking people not being happy of why Momiji had an accent. I've told a bunch of people how there is a reason for the accent. If you are not a manga reader, you might not know that, but there is a reason. So um, please don't complain to the voice actor girl about why there is an accent. Yeah, you might not like it, but there's a reason why it's there. And Toru said, oh, it's good you have family to go home to. And then Momiji says, she doesn't know about me. Then boom, the mom appears. And, and this is what I mean. If you listen, if you pay attention and you listen very, very closely, especially to the dub, when Momiji talks to his mother, the accent completely drops. Like I seen a couple other YouTubers talk about this episode, but I didn't see a lot of other people mention it. But when you listen to that scene, when he's talking to his mom, the German accent for Momiji is completely gone. And this was actually confirmed by the dub ADR director, Caitlin Glass. In the manga, in the Japanese manga there, the way it's written, there are certain insinuations of an accent, which is why they give him one. But when he talks to his mother, it completely drops. And it is because he loves his mother so much. And as we see how she completely gave up memories of Momiji, she loves her so much that he talks with an accent to feel close to her, to still feel 
a part of her world. However, when he talks to her or is around her, he drops it to protect her. Because how many Germans are in Japan? Obviously, in Fruits Basket, the only known German is Momiji and his family. So Momiji didn't want to tip her off and be like, oh, why are you, are you German? And then her, you know, realize and it would just be a whole problem. So for those complaining, about the accent, I hope you freaking get it now! And this scene was so much more graphic than the original freaking- I don't know if there's freaking trigger warnings in Japan, but freaking damn, I was not prepared for that scene. And you remember in earlier episodes, Hattori said that he caused so much pain and suffering because of his powers to erase memories. And you remember seeing a little clip of Momiji. And the scene has finally come. The scene is revealed of Hattori asking Momiji's mother, Are you sure you won't regret this? Erasing, losing the memory of your child. And she says that my greatest regret is ever giving birth to that creature. And baby Momiji is right there! <laughs> and then Momiji goes back to saying he wishes his mom could have been stronger for him. To remember him, to keep her memories for him. But he thought that that was selfish of him. No, baby, that's not selfish! Uh, this- I was not ready for this heartbreak again. That scene- that scene with freaking Kyoko and To- Oh my god, that killed me to my core. I knew this was coming, but I wasn't prepared at all! And Bunny Momichi, don't cry! And now we go to Kyoko's grave. I love how they like go all out like the freaking like Toru's friends. Kyoko wouldn't want us to be sad. She'd want us to freaking party. In this part, we see a lot more of manga only scenes being incorporated into the reboot. Like I did notice slightly in the original, they do kind of emphasize Kyo a little bit, blay about it, and I don't know, when I first saw it, I thought he just didn't want to freaking be there. But it is very emphasized in this reboot episode. Kyo and Hana are at the side together. Kyo is asking her if she can see spirits. And Hana is like, no, but I can see waves. And as you see through the original that in all that you see, you've known from the beginning that Hana has kind of always sensed something with the Somas. Kind of almost already knowing that they weren't like your average friggin' family. And Hana tells Kyo that your waves are screaming at me and they are filled with chaos and guilt. Why do you feel that way? And then we skip to the ending where Uo and Hana are like, one of those freakers are gonna confess their love to her, I just know it. And then we go back to Shiguri's where Toru is enjoying a nice tea outside, freaking having her one-on-one -on -one with her mom, and uh, it's, I love Toru. She is such a pure soul. And then Kyo's outside, freaking sees that Toru is freaking asleep. But she's so freaking cute when she's sleeping, but yo, I was not ready for this at all! Kyo leans into Toru, and then we go over to Yuki, where a, a freaking wind blasted papers out of Toru's room. He picks him up, and he sees the bloody freaking hat! And then the episode ends with Kyo going down to Toru, saying, I'm sorry. No context! That's it! What are they doing to me? This episode fucked me up so much. I was not ready at all to see what's next. But um, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my Weep family. I'm trying to get the next one up in the next week or a little before the end of next week just because I'm trying to catch up before the season ends. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for joining my Weep family. I love you very much, and I will see you next time. Bye!